Today we're going to look at the cell cycle and mitosis in some detail. So here we see what is called the cell cycle. And what this is, is it literally is looking at any given cell and what would happen throughout the time it's it, from the time it's born um, to the time it gets replaced. So what you see here is that we have this part that's called interphase. And interphase consists of three uh, intermediate steps. So here, interphase, we can call G1 um, from this point here. Then we have part of interphase is also S. And this is also interphase, which is G2. So it always starts at G1. And then at some point, the decision this is the decision point whether or not it'll go into the S phase or into G2. And I'll describe each of these in turn. But you can see, because you can look at the interior wedges, what that is really referring to. So at this point, G1, which is the, it's sometimes called the gap phase, is also a period where the cell is first born and then develops and does whatever it needs to do. So it's going to do its job during this time period, during G1 interphase. If there are signals that come in to tell the cell that it's time to replace itself to, or to divide, then those signals will allow the cell to move on into the stage we're calling G, um, the S phase of this interphase. And during that time, that's when the DNA inside the cell's nucleus is going to be uh, copied. So we'll see DNA synthesis occurring during that S phase. Again, everything here is regulated very carefully um, using specific signals from parts of the cell or surrounding cells and other, other enzymes that are involved. So this is cell, the S phase of interphase, which is when DNA gets copied or synthesized. If all goes well, it's going to go into the next phase, which is the G2 phase. And in G2 phase of interphase, you're going to get additional growth, additional things preparing then for this point at which the cell will enter mitosis, or the mitotic phase. And mitosis has specific, uh, a specific sequence of events, um, and we're going to look at those right away. So here is basically what I just talked about with the blue representing interphase and that the red is representing that M phase or mitosis. So we're going to see a little bit more on that as we come up. Um, gap 1 G is the G1 phase, S phase, DNA synthesis. G2 or gap 2 is the additional growth needed before going into mitosis. So let's look at the gap phases again, um, and in particular, sorry, the three stages of interphase, including those gap phases. So we made a, a point of already saying that this is the time, this G1, is when the cell is doing what it needs to do. So this is the cell is what we call biochemically active. If it's a cell in your, in your intestinal linings, then it knows what to do, and it's actively doing that. We don't see anything in particular at this point. We don't see any evidence of change because something has to signal that cell that it needs to move into this next phase, which is the S phase. So once that's happened, the S phase is going to allow, at this point, we're going to get identical copies of all of the DNA. So every strand of, of chromatin for that particular species, that individual, um, has to be copied. And when that gets copied, it's copied so such that this, there is an actual identical copy that's attached to the original. And we call that at that point that the two of those things are sister chromatids. And they're going to be joined at, at a point we call the centro, kind of think center, mirror. So this is, a, it looks like it's like an adhesive area that holds these two sister chromosomes, or sorry, chromatids together. The set, then we have an area called the centrosomes. And centrosomes are an area that we're going to look at in, in particular that are 
the things that start to move. I think we showed that on one of the earlier slides, that there's a, these structures called centrioles, and they're in this kind of region now that we're going to call centrosomes. And they make something called the spindle. And the spindle are these fibers that we will see um, in the next few slides here. In animal cells, there are centrosomes and they with these centrioles, and they're going to organize cell division. I'm going to focus mainly on animal cells, but we'll get a, a little view of plant cells too. And then finally, the G2 phase is the second gap phase where we're going to need to store up a little bit more energy, we're going to um, make more organelles, and we're going to get ready then to go into mitosis. So mitosis has a, has a fancy name called karyo with a K, which really is referring to cells or a kernel, which is also cells, and then kinesis, which is this movement that occurs. So it's kind of a dance that takes place and we're going to see that how this dance occurs here shortly. So that's the first part of mitosis, is, are the steps that are called, under this umbrella of karyokinesis. So we'll see that. And that's really, the focus on that is the nucleus of the cells. So we're going to see what happens to all of those, those sister chromatids and where they end up going. And then the, the final part, or the second part, of this mitotic phase is when the, the rest of the cell is divided into two separate daughter cells, and that's called cyto, think about cytoplasm, and again, this dance or this movement, kinesis. So karyokinesis is focused on the nuclear division, cytokinesis on the rest that divides the cell into two daughter cells. This is a, an overview of the whole process, and this is nice. Your book has this too, so you can look at this in, in specific detail, and you want to know these different steps, but you have to think of them, they sort of flow into one another. They aren't like stop and start things. They're going to go from prophase to kind of an intermediate step called pro-metaphase into this very characteristic metaphase anaphase, telophase, and then finally this thing we're calling cytokinesis. So prophase is, we notice very specific things happening. Number one, the nuclear uh, membrane or the nuclear envelope breaks down, so it starts to fade away. We see other or things such as the organelles, particularly those ones that are, have membranes around them, start to sort of move toward the edge of the cell. The nucleolus, which remember was in the nucleus to start with, disappears. We have this area, these things called centrosomes, where are going to start to migrate to opposite sides. And then little tubules are going to come out of this, these things within the centrosome called centrioles, and these microtubules form the spindle. The sister chromatids are going to continue to coil and get tighter and tighter together, and we'll see this. So here's the sister chromatids. In other words, this here would be representing a single strand of chromatin that has made a copy and now is connected to that copy in this area we're calling the centromere, this area right in here. And there's actually a protein here that we're going to see called a kinetochore. The kinetochores is just, it's kind of like where the spindle fibers can hook onto each of these sides of these sister chromatids for the future purpose of pulling them into two different directions. They line up in the middle, and here you can see that the, here's the spindle fibers coming from, here's the centrioles, or you could call the centrosomes, these areas here, with the spindle fibers reaching out connecting to those kinetochores right on either side here. The sister chromatids are connected at this center point called centromeres. And they're all kind of lined up in metaphase. And then those points that are holding the sisters together starts to break up a little bit. Those are proteins also called cohesion proteins. And the spindle fibers start to shorten, and as they shorten, they pull these sisters apart two opposite directions in the stage we call anaphase. 
and the cell stretches out a little bit so you can see it's longer, it's a little wider. And then telophase happens and in telophase it's, it's like a kind of, like I said, this whole thing is rather a dance. Suddenly things start to appear again. So we get a new nuclear membrane forming around each of those uh, sets of sister chromatids. Um, the spindle starts to, to disappear. It gets kind of, they say it depolymerizes because it really is a polymer. So it just starts to, starts to break down. Um, and this is part of telophase. We see this. This, new, these new nuclear membranes, and notice that we have a little bit of everything here. So we have some endoplasmic reticulum and some mitochondria on each side. And then we get the division part. So in an animal cell, we, it starts to pinch off in the middle and it forms these two cells that are independent. So here's the two daughter cells. Um, there's a, a ring actually that forms here that actually sort of pinches this thing in two. If it's a plant cell, what's interesting is that those Golgi um, vesicles, so little Golgi vesicles here, actually form this midline plate, and that plate divides this, this, these two cells, or this single plant cell that's now undergone division into two. So both of these together we would call cytokinesis, but in a plant cell and an animal cell it's just a little different. So, quick review on these phases of mitosis interphase. We see a cell doing its job, but then prior to moving into cell division, it has to make copies of, of pretty much everything. There's the nucleus, there's the nuclear envelope, there's the nucleolus, there's those things called centrosomes. Then we enter into mitosis. The very first step is prophase. What we see in prophase is that we have the, so what it's trying to show you here is the, what the original one was, like up here, it kind of looked like that, and then as you're watching it go from here to here in prophase, you see the nuclear envelope is breaking down, you see these centrioles or centrosomes moving to opposite sides, and now these sister chromatids have coiled even further, so you see them very condensed. They actually look like what we call, more often, the not chromosomes. There you go, chromatids of the chromosome. There's the centrosomes. There's the developing spindle fibers. Prometaphase, a little bit further along, you can see the nuclear membrane is now gone. Um, the microtubules are um, connecting to are these they're, to their uh, or the spindle fibers are connecting to those center points which we call kinetochores. Nuclear envelope you can see it's pretty much gone. There's the kinetochore in the middle there that um, sister chromatid. And there's the microtubules. All right metaphase you can see it's all nicely lined up in the middle at the, at the cell's equator. Okay, we're going to continue on. Anaphase, see the separation of the sister chromatids go to opposite poles of the cell. And then finally, telophase, the um, pinching off of the cell into two separate cells.